What's up guys, Subzeric here for something a little different. I do some of these like talky videos from time to time when there's something I really want to discuss. And I saw this Reddit thread today and I felt like I had to talk about it. It's just a, it's a really interesting topic. I'm really, really interested to hear you guys' perspectives on it as well and give my perspective. Um, to start off, it is this Reddit post that says, are there technically unwinnable games in TFT? I, no matter who plays in the scenario, it wouldn't end well. Um, and there are almost 100 comments, a lot of other people uh, talking about, yes, they're unwinnable games. Other people, you know, talking about uh, every game is top fourable. Uh, you can probably see from my upvote how I swing on the, the discussion. Some people will say, you know, you can turn an eighth into a fifth or sixth. There's a lot to be said here. Um, so I am really, really interested to delve into this topic and talk about it. Uh, while I do talk about it, uh, for you guys' viewing pleasure, I have a VOD here from JD Zelinsky, who, you know, if we're talking about someone top fouring, uh, top fouring every single game yesterday at the Ascension of the Ages, day one uh, of the tournament. Um, he top, maybe top three'd every game. He was like two, three, I don't know. There were some firsts in there, some seconds in there. I, I don't know if he even went lower than a third. Um, so, you know, just to say that, hey, you know, some people can have insane performances as well like that. Also, he's got the new arena, which is ooh, so beautiful. Um, but let, let me get into um, what we're talking about here. I think there, there's one part where you have to start the conversation, which is first, are you talking about winning every game or are you talking about going top four every game? Um, would the theoretically perfect TFT player just go first, 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 first? Um, and my answer to that is probably no. Uh, I don't think it's reasonable to expect even a perfect player to go first every single game um, because there are unbalanced things there there are just things in tft that are are insta win uh and if you get one of those insta win things um it's it's very hard for everyone else in the lobby to to win through that so you know the example i'm thinking of is if you have a if you start a game with wandering trainer you get a fortune emblem and then uh at 2-1 you get a, another fortune emblem um you know your trainer has fortune and then you get fortune emblem means that once you get to seven fortune you essentially win the game it's almost impossible for anyone to outcap that because it becomes very easy to go for like three star five cost in that position um i think in that situation it is impossible for uh, another player to actually win that game if that is piloted even by someone who's like relatively strong, you know, like I can I can pivot that spot into a first every single time. And I'm I would say a pretty good player, but, you know, I'm not at the level of, you know, dish soap sets go why why one uh, Mr. Unknown who I'll talk about. Um, so I'll start with that where, where I'll say there are games that you personally cannot win. You cannot go first in that game. And I think that's a pretty uncontroversial topic. Um, but that brings me to my second point, which is, okay, so if we if we change what we're talking about here, which is not winning, which is not bot fouring, because because the, the person in the red post is talking about, are there unwinnable games of TFT? So I think that's a person talking about, you know, are there games where I'm just going to go, uh, you know, bot four no matter what I do? Um, and I think that is a more interesting question and a question where, in my opinion, the answer is that no, there are no games that you are guaranteed bot four when you load into the game just with the way that your rng is going to go you know if you could see look ahead and see what your augment choices are what your shops are what your item drops are i don't think there's a single game that you are guaranteed to bot for no matter how you play um and so just uh just a quick little i'm gonna pause the video and then look at a couple uh, of examples here this is my video on uh on mr unknown when he was rank one uh, korea he's probably still rank one korea honestly 2.83 average placement. He top forward 81% of his games, which obviously great stats, not 100%, but certainly approaching it. Uh, also, this is, I think the first time I ever VOD reviewed YBY1. This is when he had, I mean, just, just look, just look at these scores, man. One, 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 a 1 1.7 AVP over the last 20 and obviously not a single bot four in these. And this is just Dish Soap right now, his match history, where once again, 3.5 uh, AVP, very, very high. If you look at his last uh, 20 games, he's got a few eighths in there, but 2.8 average placement, uh, obviously insanely high. I do think um, the, these players are really good examples of getting close to perfection in TFT, getting close to, you know, being at the, at the perfect player that we talk about. Because I think players, when they ask this question, when they say, are, are there unwinnable games? I think they should be compared against the theoretical perfect player that doesn't exist because there is no perfect player because no one makes 100% correct decisions. Um, you know, not even talking about like with hindsight of knowing what you're gonna hit later, but just in the moment, 
even players like Dishop YBY are going to make mistakes. They're not going to play their strongest board. They're going to slam slightly suboptimal items. They're going to take augments that are slightly suboptimal. And, you know, for, for a layman, you know, for, for someone like me, I might not even see those mistakes. But if there was theoretically a perfect TFT player, uh, they would be able to see those mistakes. And, you know, sometimes it's easier to see with hindsight. You pick an augment. Uh, and, you know, they end up bot four in the game and they go, oh, you know, I really shouldn't have taken that augment because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, it's, it's hard, uh, but sometimes, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, you can see that. Um, so uh, I say those players aren't perfect. Um, there's no way to definitively prove that those players aren't perfect, but I think it's pretty reasonable to say that, you know, if you watch a Dish Soap stream, uh, you'll see him after some games be like, ah, man, like I really shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have made this item. I shouldn't have done this because that messed up the rest of my game. Uh, you know, it's very infrequent that you see Dish Soap come out of a game and just say, well, there was nothing I could have done this game. The, the game just sucks. Sometimes, sometimes people say that, but I think the best players very rarely say something like that. Very rarely do they say there's nothing I could have done here. Almost every single time they will say, I could, I could have done a lot more this game. I just, you know, messed up by taking this augment. I was tilted. I, I read chat and chat said to do this thing. And then I messed that up. And it's not as if that happens once a game. It's not as if Dish Soap comes out of a game and says, well, I messed up this one thing this game, but everything else I did perfectly. Uh, even these best players in the world will often come out of a game and say, well, I could have done this better. I could have done this better. You know, my, my pivot was actually like sloppy at 5-1. I could have actually like done this a lot better. I could have slammed my items faster. Uh, you know, I wasn't, I, I was slow in my pivot and that made it so that I uh, actually took too long uh, and I wasn't able to like position for this person. I didn't scout this person. I didn't see that this person was, you know, stacking up a three-star four cost and then that lost me the game because I got lazy or something like that. Even these best players are making tons of little, little mistakes every game. And something that I, you know, that really brought this point home to me when I was thinking about this uh, is, uh, is Setsuko's Worlds run. Uh, when Setsuko played in Worlds set... What was that? It was Hero Augments. That was set eight, right? Um, set eight, Setsuko Worlds run, where this guy just smurfed on everyone. It was Setsuko and Ru Replay. At the end of the first two days, they were just right at the top. Like, nobody else was was close to them points-wise. Um, however, if you watch some of Setsuko's games, especially his game, I think it was... I don't know if it, it was on the final day, right? Where Setsuko had the game where he, he took... Uh, it was a it was a hero augment. He he ended up like re-rolling for a really weird hero augment. Um he could have taken just like a completely fine augment and for people who weren't around in set eight, uh, you know, it's it's like he could have taken a completely serviceable augment, but he decided to say he, he just said fuck it. Like I'm pretty sure he said out loud, fuck it. I'm gonna roll for like the best possible augment, which wasn't even better than the augment that he had. He just wanted almost the four fun augment, uh, rolled, got like almost punished but not really and had to take a different option and he ended up still winning that game but that was a game where i remember watching it live with people setsuko made so many mistakes that game on the world stage which is supposed to be the pinnacle the best players in the world he made a ton of mistakes that game and he still won the game so if the players that are winning games in these worlds level lobbies are still making lots of mistakes uh you can see how you know somebody who is not in a world's level lobby who's just playing solo queue is obviously making you know tons and tons and tons of mistakes um and so well, like why do i talk about it like this like why do i talk about the mistakes this way because like some people bring up the point that well somebody's gonna have to bot for a game if you put eight perfect players in a lobby together somebody's gonna bot four in that lobby and that's true i mean that's obviously true if you put just if, if you clone if you make the perfect player somehow in a, in a lab and they're like a robot and then you clone that person seven times and you put them all into a lobby well obviously some people are going to bot for but that's not the world that we live in and my point in saying all this is that is that is very very far from the world that we live in uh you know there are no one is playing perfect tft right now um and that actually like matters a lot that no one is playing perfect T tft because then you know people will hear that and they'll say oh well you know that's that doesn't really matter uh, that no one's playing perfect TFT because like I'm not playing perfect TFT. So like I, I shouldn't be compared against these people who are theoretically, you know, like, oh, maybe they could play perfect TFT if they wanted to. I should be compared against like an average player. But that's not what we're talking about here. I think when people when people say this, when people say like, are there unwinnable games? Um, they're saying this almost to give themselves like a permission structure to say like, there was nothing I could do this game. And this is this is my big point. This is my... Uh, main sort of thesis of this video and usually I feel like the thesis is supposed to be at the, the start but I'm like halfway through and I'm, I'm just getting to the main thesis but look it's fine it's fine it's fine my main thesis is that when you get out of a TFT game if you bot forward and honestly even if you top forward 
you should be saying I messed up in, in these areas, or you should at least have the idea you should know that you messed up um, and, and try to seek out information to figure out how you could have played that game better. Because what I think when people say, yeah, they're just some unwinnable games of TFT, like you have to play for a sixth. I think when people say that, they're giving them themselves permission to be lazy and say, well, there was nothing I could have done. Uh, so I played perfectly this game, right? And I just got unlucky. And it's so easy to do that in a game like TFT. That is, and it's easy to do in every game, right? You know, I, I was a League of Legends player before this. So many people would say, well, this this game of League I played was was unwinnable because I had this person on my team and, you know, they were 0-3 top lane at like five minutes and, and the game's just over at that point. And honestly, in, in a League context, maybe that's true, that that game is, is unwinnable uh, even if you... I mean, you know, if you put Faker in your spot, he probably still wins it, uh, especially in your in your gold game, uh, is all I'm saying. But, you know, like, may maybe, maybe. But TFT is is actually very different. And my God, speaking of perfect play, JD is level nine at 4-2. This, this is a really entertaining game to watch. Um, but TFT is actually very different uh, in that it's just you, right? There's no teammates to rely on. So every decision that you make is within your own control. The, the teammates in TFT are RNG. Um... But I don't think there's ever a situation where RNG is sufficiently uh, like bad enough that you're guaranteed to bot four. There, there are certainly difficult spots to play. But even in the games where there are difficult uh, spots to play, and uh, you know, like the game was really, really hard, and like you know, you you would have had to do a, a ton of different stuff to top four. It's still very doable. And what uh, what I'm trying to say with all of this is that. You know, the point that I made earlier, if you get out of a TFT game and you bot forward, I think I'm also, I'm also just kind of like getting dizzy watching JD play this game because it's like so kind of like crazy. Everything that's going on here is like pivoting his board into this. I mean, this is a really cool game to watch, honestly, in the background. Would have been a cool game to review. I mean, I'm kind of reviewing it by just saying, wow, what a beast. Um, but when you get out of a game of TFT, you should immediately say, what did I do wrong? And I think the assumption that you did something wrong is, is true 100% of the time. Um, you, you need to get out of a game of TFT, and if you bot forward that game, say, okay, what did I do wrong this game? Um, and, and that's the easiest way to do it. Like I said, even in top four, even if you go first, you probably did something wrong. Sometimes it can be a little bit harder to analyze, but you should really get out of every single game of TFT with the assumption, with the assumption that you made a mistake. Um, and this comes up a lot in like coaching contexts, uh, in my opinion, uh, because I think it's hard in TFT to see your own mistakes. You know, very, very often you will see um, players um, uh, play play the game, and you'll say, uh, and they will say, you know, I don't, I don't know what I did wrong this game. Like I, I thought I played this game perfectly. And if you have a player that's even just a few ranks higher than them, coach them. The the coach can see infinite mistakes that this player made. You know, I'll I'll very often coach people who are you know respectable rank, you know, who are like master in TFT, and I watch them play, and we're you know five minutes into a game, and I say, well, like already, like like I I hate how you've played stage two, you know, like. Like already stage two, I feel like there's a ton of stuff you could do to set yourself up for a better game. And that stuff, you know, compounds to the rest of the game. But even even if I say, okay, imagine you played a perfect stage two, you know, there's mistakes, in my opinion, that you made in, in terms of augment selection, in terms of like how you rolled, like what comp you picked, uh, in terms of what items you slammed, all this kind of stuff. If you have someone who's really, really strong, look at your game 100% of the time. I've never had a, a coaching session where I've coached someone uh, and said, you played perfect. Like, uh, like... If if that happened, I would just refund the session because I would be like, yeah, I mean, you're just a beast. You you played perfectly this game and you bought for it because you got unlucky. But every single time, even if I coach someone who you know is is quite high elo, uh, you can you can easily find mistakes, and that's true for your own gameplay as well, right? Like if you rewatch your own games, even if you in the moment thought that you played it really well, very often it's very easy to say like, okay, you know what? I actually really messed up in this one spot. Also, look at this double Irelia shop. I mean, it's not really high roll because he's rolling on level nine, but still, my God, that's nice. Um, but yeah, even if you watch your own games, very often it's easy to see like, uh, like I really, like if you look back at the stats and look at the stats on, like I did this a lot because I played in this tourney yesterday and I had a really bad first couple of games. I went eighth into seventh in my first two games in this tournament um, yesterday. And looking back on those games, uh, the augments that I picked, uh, the the way that I played out the games, like it was it was really uh, it was really sloppy, right? There there was a lot that I could have done uh, those games, and like in the moment, 
in the moment, I was actually like, I don't know what I could have done. These games were just unplayable. Uh, like, it's not my fault. But looking back on the games, you know, you sleep on it, you wake up the next day and you look at the games, you realize, you know what? I actually like I played these games kind of terribly, you know, and and like I, I think it's fair that I performed as badly as I did. Uh, and, you know, that's even, you know, someone like myself who I went in with, I mean, you know, less prep than some people, but a decent amount of prep. And, you know, I was pretty confident going in, but any anybody can make mistakes. That That's something that I learned watching really, really strong players. Uh, Setsuko is like one of the best people to watch for this because he he yaps so much about it. Setsuko will very, very often make just horrible, horrible game losing mistakes. Well, not really game losing because oftentimes he still wins through them. But Setsuko will very often make terrible mistakes when he plays. And it's really great to watch him because he'll be like, ah, what am I like? Uh, what am I doing? Do you guys hate me? Do you guys hate me? Like, what, what about what? Do you guys hate me? Like, Setsuko is one of the perfect people to watch for that because he will emote out loud. He will say, like, I messed all of this stuff up. And that's someone who is rank one on the ladder right now, his rank one every single set that uh, that TFT, you know, exists is he's consistently rank one. And that's still someone saying, you know what, like I suck, you know, like I, I played terribly this game. Uh, so like if someone like Setsuko can say that, I think you can say that. Uh, and that's like I was talking about with my thesis, my thesis statement. Um, you know, what what I really want to say with this video is don't be lazy in analysis of your own TFT play. If you bought Ford a game, it's because you made a mistake. A hundred percent. Unless you're rank one North America. And even then, if you're Setsuko, if you're Setsuko, you can complain and say there was nothing you can do. I think if you're Setsuko or Dish Soap, th those are the only two people who I think I, I can give like a an excuse to to say, OK, if those people think that they played perfectly and they bought Ford, that's fine. But this is especially aimed at anyone who is, if you're if you're a gold, if you're plat, if you're diamond, if you're master, if you're grandmaster in TFT, and you think you played a game perfectly, I can promise you, I would bet you money that if you had Setsuko or Dish Soap or YBY or Mr. Unknown review your game, they could give you at least 10 mistakes that you made, probably more, uh, that had huge impact on uh, on your game. Uh, and so that's that's really where I where it comes down to for me. Don't be lazy in your own self analysis of your TFT play. Uh, you know, don't don't say it's good enough. You know, I uh, I went fit this game. That was probably good enough um, because very, very frequently. No, I'm, I'm not even going to say very frequently because I'm someone who usually likes to, to hedge a little bit and say, oh, maybe you played perfectly. But in this situation, as as a hedger, as someone who always hedges, I'm not going to hedge in this situation. A hundred percent of the time, if you bought four uh, in a game of TFT, it's because you made a mistake. And I, I just think that's like even if that wasn't true, and I'm very confident that it is true, even if that wasn't true, I still think that's a really good mentality to go in with because so many people, like I was talking about, the League people who, you know, used to play League, um, you know, I mean, a lot of TFT players come from League, but even people who still play League want to be lazy. It's so easy to be lazy in your analysis and say, I played this game perfectly, it's not my fault. Um, but I think it, it does you a huge disservice. Man, he's moving these items around like every round. Like still, even someone like JD here who won day one of the tournament, He's moving his positioning around. I'm pretty sure JD would have said, you know, maybe his positioning last round was a mistake because he swapped it up this round. So someone who literally won the tournament, who, uh, you know, absolutely dominated everyone else. Probably if you had JD rewatch this game, he would show you a lot of mistakes he made. Like literally just this this positioning and item movement thing here shows that last round he made a mistake. And that's just that's just like an obvious mistake that, you know, like I'm not even surface level, you know, I'm, I'm surface level reviewing this game. So you guys have something to watch. Um, but that, that's something that's, you know, obvious. And, uh, and I'm sure there were tons of mistakes, even in this game, which is an unequivocal first. It's an easy first. Like, he's going to win with 68, 60 HP, and he, we've already seen, like, one mistake that I'm sure he would even uh, agree is a mistake. Uh, small thing, but small things like that can compound. That can lose you a fight, uh, and that can, you know, lose you placements, lose a game if the person he's fighting is stronger, if they, you know, are hitting a three-star four cost with that time that we give them when we lose that fight. Um, so yeah, we're about at the end of the game. I'm really curious to hear you guys' take on this, uh, cause I know it's a controversial topic. Um, and I know, you know, there, there are lots of people on both sides. Uh, you know, there was a ton of people in the Reddit thread who said, yeah, obviously some games are just, you know, eights. And like, if you played to a six, you played it well. Um, so I'm really, really curious to hear what your guys' take on this kind of, uh, thing is. Cause yeah, it's, it's fun to, to talk about. Uh, and I think it, it really, really matters if your goal is to be a good TFT player, if your goal is to improve at TFT, which I assume most people watching my channel, uh, that's their goal. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I, like I said, I'd really like to hear you guys' opinions on it down below. So please, in the comments, let me know what you guys think. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.